Hello, this is Acquisition, and I guess I've been waiting for this one for some time now. So, Fate Extra, if you, if anybody here remembers me Let's Playing that, actually had a bit of a mid cool that was never released outside of Japan. A fan translation was made for it recently, so that's what I'm playing right now. Fate Extra CCC. Uh, let's see here, we're doing hard. The... Because, unlike in the original extra, the difficulty only changes enemy numbers. It doesn't touch on, um, on what you call it. It doesn't touch the recovery fountains. A bonus? Why, yes, please. Start. Is this what logging it Is this what logging into the moon cell looks like? いつものように大変長らくお待ちしておりました。マスター、ここが洋式虚構世界シリアルファンタズム。逆称セラフに作られた仮想空間。失礼ですが、規則ですのであなたのバリューをスキャンします。レベル、編入生、カテゴリー、優、測定拒否権に免除。クオリティ、E-。確認しました。それでは、表側の記録をお読み込みます。Let's what do you know? 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 What So this, t so just like an extra, we're going with caster. Okay. Progress of time. It's a bright sunny morning as I make my way to school. I should really be used to commuting by now, but I still can't seem to remember the way here. Soon enough, I arrive in front of the school gate. There's still plenty of time left. Other students in the same uniform pass through the gate in peaceful harmony. Continuing my main routine, I also head for the gate. Ben, I feel as if someone's calling for me, so I hurry up until I see my friend and student council president, Issei Ryudo, standing there. Which reminds me. Starting today, they would be doing inspections to ensure we were in compliance with school rules. It was Public Morals Awareness Month or something. Eh. So it seems. I have no idea why I mistook that event to be today myself. I laugh it off, telling you say, it's nothing, then head towards the school building. What do you need of me? Close up the su supply room on the first floor? Okay. Storage room on the first floor? If I recall, it's at the end of the hallway to the left of the entrance. I still have time until the homeroom starts, and it's a request of Issei himself. There's no reason to refuse. Strange 
these people, huh? <laughs> he thanks me in an exaggerated manner and resumes his task of overseeing the main gate. He told me that Public Morals Awareness Month doesn't start today, but here he is. The student Council President is as diligent as a fine-tuned machine. I say goodbye to Issei and head for the school building, squinting against the sunlight that didn't really feel like early summer or early spring. And so, my day begins once again. Okay, so we can save now. Uh, let's check our settings. Message speed fast. Event voice is on. Background music. Sound effects, yeah, yeah. Camera controls, normal. Normal, maniac. Okay, I think we're good. Pain suddenly rushes through my left hand. Wondering why, I check the back of it. On my left hand, a bruise resembling a rune had appeared. I don't remember seeing it before. I wonder if I hurt myself somewhere. The pain soon subsided. Maybe it was just a dizzy spell. I take a deep breath and pull myself together. It's just... I feel like I heard an extremely familiar voice. Progress of time, 7%. Start button. Oh, I see. That's, that's not bad. Yeah. This definitely must be happening before the events of, uh... Before the events of... This must have happened during Bait Extras Prologue. At least that's what it seems like. Alright, I'll go and get to the storeroom. This is the entrance. If I had to say what this door is used for... I have no idea. Issei said this was the supply room, so I figured this is a space for storing things no one is using. Whatever the case, there's no reason for me to go inside. I take the key out of my pocket. Better hurry up and lock it so I can get to class. That sound coming from inside just now. Since I was tasked with locking this door, I can't just ignore it. I put my ear to the door to listen in on what's happening inside. <laughs> they weren't. Whoever's talking wasn't careful. <laughs> I think we know why she locked. Well, I'll save that for later. Camping my way to victory. Campers! Campers! Ugh. There's obviously someone in there. I knock on the door and ask, is someone in there? The suspicious sounds continue for about a minute before settling down. I take a deep breath and knock on the door again. I announce my entrance, then open the door. There's someone in the locker, I'm thinking. This here's the problem. Not that I really want to know any more than that. Come on, at least do a better job of hiding it. Then I could pretend nothing was wrong and leave it at that. Now I have no choice but to point it out. So I take a deep breath and... Hey you, get out already! Someone's definitely desperately trying to shut the door from inside. But the door won't actually close. This person A doesn't really fit into the locker. I have to do this. Let's see. So, abiding by reverse psychology, why don't I help them hide? I try to force the locker door closed with the entirety of my body weight. Na 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 na
Ow. Well, that hurt. This incredibly suspect person glares at me with furrowed brows. I should be throwing out the questions first here, but I get the feeling that doing so would just make the things worse. First off, I told her my name in class, then I threw out the questions. No matter how I look at it, she's not a student. Who is this woman? And where's this girl's room she spoke of? I see books, console. Oh, hold on, that's a fight stick. Living in hiding here? I guess. It's a substitute teacher? This obvious slop of a woman is? Oh, so she's a shut-in. I see. So you do nothing and are useless, I take it. Jinako puffs her chest with an air of pride. Her, her breasts sway even under the hold of her strap. This woman said she was a substitute teacher. A dubious tale, but I don't have time for this right now, and it doesn't seem like she's a bad person. I decided to tell her that if she's going to live in the storeroom, then to keep this key and lock the door. Regularly scheduled patrol the forums. <laughs> Go on already, she said as she showed me the door. It's almost time for homeroom. I know to hurry up and leave without being told to. Look, I know the situation she's in. I'm not gonna quite say I've been in it. I don't. I think I'm. I don't think I have been, but. I know what she- I think I have an idea of what she's going through myself, so... Sometimes people are just like that. So, I wouldn't call it weird. Because I know people who are even weirder are the words that came to mind, but that's not right. In the first place, I wouldn't know what kind of person Shinaku Karigiri is because I've only just met her. But for me to affirm that she's not weird is simply because everyone's weird somehow. Hmm... <laughs> 
あそろそろホームルームの時間っすよ遅刻はの君は僕と違って真面目に生きるべき一つからそれじゃせいぜい気をつけてどうあっても結末は同じっすけどせめて苦しまないようファイトっすー I've somehow been run out of the storeroom I hear a click clack from the keys locking the door. It seems that it's been tightly shut from the inside. Jinako Karigiri. As I leave the dark storeroom, I think to myself how odd it is. Had there all there's been participants like that here? Wait. Hey, wait. I used a pretty weird phrase just now. I wonder if I'm still half asleep. I feel more restless this morning than I've ever been. It might be a fever, so I should probably head right home. Oh, head, bleh, head home right after school. All right, let's go to homeroom. This. You can wash your hands here. It's old, but kept really clean and well stocked with soap. Public hand washing facilities. Interesting. All right, let's get. Let's go up. Huh? I just got to the stairs leading to the second floor. Then I suddenly heard a voice overhead. It sounds like, say, the frantic footsteps of a woman who just slipped. Oh sh. It sounds like nothing. Someone's really falling down right now. Ow! <laughs> With a sudden crash, I fall on my back into the hallway. I hit the back of my head onto the hard floor. My brain shakes and my eyes spin. What on earth just happened? Setting aside my blurred vision, let me see what's going on here. Oops. Think of there's no quick get off option. So I don't trust this character. I do not trust this character at all. Oops. And I've just. こんなに激しくされたのは初めてまるでそこの市の国道のよう。いいえ、呼吸に喘ぐ魚のような魚の。What? What? Nope, I'm out of commission. Ow, what the heck am I doing here? All I remember is that something fell on me and that I came to my senses after I hit the back of my head. 
When I pulled my stuff together and looked up, there was the face of an unfamiliar woman before me. I managed to tell her my name. <laughs> Have I mentioned I don't trust this character? Because I don't trust this character. Master? What's that? I wanted to ask about it, but the woman was gone. All that left was a light lingering scent like a candle from a bonfire. Actually, that woman's scent is now all over my uniform. Yeah, I've been through some outrageous things this morning. If a classmate saw what happened just now, and just now. Oh dear! <laughs> Someone actually saw me. The one in the red school uniform was glaring at me like I'm human garbage as my classmate who recently transferred in Leo. Leo seems to have seen the entire thing from the top of the stairs. Hey, I said as I waved at him. So said Leo with an angelic smile as he went on ahead to classroom 2A. Well, there was no get her off early option. Alright, I guess after that encounter, we might as well just go to class. Classroom 2A. I've had quite the morning and all before home started. As I took my seat and started to relax, my friend Shinji Mato came over to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> あそこはお前みたいな凡人が行っていい場所じゃない。あれは選ばれたプレイヤー。そう。一握りのゲームチャンプだけが発言し、信者を得るべき場所だからね。ゲームシャン。わかる現在バトルスコア7800万。ワール
何か言いたいことがあるのかよレオ文句があるならスコアで語ってほしいねあなたは2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2人が2はい。I think the three of us went through a major shared experience together. That experience is why we understand each other, but what was it? Oh well, if I can't remember, then it must not have been that big of a deal. いざ競い合え魔術師たち聖杯は勝ち残った最後の一人のいかなる望みをも叶えるだろうファイナルフィクターにもしてデザイアなんて手垢のついた触れ込みでさどこの運営かもわからないしそもそも参加方法もわからないうさんくさいったらないよね管理人も放置しているし一体何なんだって話マドリーズ just left it too The week real war Where have I heard that before? でも興味は湧きますねいかなる願いでも叶えるですか例えばあなたならどんな願いを口にしますか What would I wish for? A wish? Even if you ask, I can't think of just one off the top of my head. There are a lot of things I want, but they're all things I can get if I work hard enough. When they say any wish, I feel like it has to be the nuisance of being something you could never get on your own. I couldn't really think of any huge wish I could have right now. そうですかあなたらしいですね。もちろんですよ。僕はそのために福見原に転入して。うん、おかしいな。僕が転入したのは父の都合でしたよね。That's right, I answer. Leo and his older brother both transferred to Tsukumihara about half a year ago. Though I don't remember when I heard it, the fact of it has definitely been recorded. So, this is me. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, so you are going to use me soon to keep me in the shock. Me, so I'm going to be almost sure I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know. なんでそこであの陰気な兄ちゃんの話になるのかなつぎにどんな願いがあるんだいって振られるの話の流れ的に僕だよねジュリアスはリオの兄弟ジュリアスはリオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟リオの兄弟 Really? You're still using a Rolls Royce? Come on, use like a Polestar or something. I don't... 
ね2人とも聞いてる僕アジア圏のゲームチャンプなんだよもっとこう扱い方があるんじゃない死にびもいめっちゃです We're going to say that after your number one, please. <laughs> ah, man. Ocean of Game Champ. Total score number one of my score. That's good. Boko are number two of Jimmy Avant. They won't meet it all. I wonder what game they're talking about. I saw a tunnel of bones in there. Today's kind of poor I never can. You are the hygiene cheat of player. Jim Sina technique to hand on you. Inspiration that I book of us shows a violence. ニートロよ。レオ。来週には次の子を蹴って僕が晴れてナンバーワンプレイヤー。確かに次のキャンペーンはシンジの独断中ですね。頑張ってください。ナンバーワンの暁には僕もお祝いをしましょう。King Shinji. <laughs> oh man. While we are talking idly, the bell for homeroom rang. The teacher in charge of our class is a noisy one. As a matter of fact, as soon as the bell rings, you can hear what's like a wild animal stomping in from the hallway. Stomping in... or not? Oh no. The entire class gas must not affect the development. The classroom goes dead silent. There's someone that we've never seen before, that this school's never seen before. A woman dressed as a Buddhist nun. She must be in her 20s. With a gentle gaze and graceful stance, she exudes a womanly charm in spite of her rigid nun's uniform. Everyone is shocked by this woman's presence. Without a word, our eyes follow her as she heads to the lectern. But my situation was quite a ways different. It's because I had an unexpected encounter with this woman just a bit ago. Oh, this can't get this day can't get any worse. Asakara The Buddhist nun acknowledges the entire class's bewilderment with calm, or rather with cheer. Then, with a graceful motion, she bows. Her movements are as fluid as the wind and conveyed straight away how earnest she was. Fujimura Taiga to Moshimasu. Kyo kara kono gakuen de kyo ben wo motsu koto ni narimashita. Douka, yoroshiku o negai shimasu ne. Be my honor to do so from now on. <laughs> Shinji always starts with the country and stance, but this time he immediately turned into jelly. I guess Shinji has a soft spot for mature women. <laughs> Regardless, it's no surprise that even Shinji would get entranced. Everything about this nun. Miss Fujimura, Baker, appearance exudes purity. That's not. I guess one could even call her appearance affectionate. That voice, that posture, the eyes, the smile—all that is saying she means us well. <laughs> but there's a strange feeling of discomfort that nips at even the back of my neck. I feel like the name Tega Fujimura calls a far different image to mind. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh oh. Oh no, she recognizes me. I awkwardly greet her back, partly just because our eyes met. And then she gave me the greatest smile, one that would melt whoever saw it. Yeah, stroke of bad luck. Like, this Come on, what are you trying to do? Kill me from embarrassment? Oh, wow, Leo, thank you for making things even worse. This can't end well. The critical damage from Leo's words, the classroom turned into a melting pot of gossip. There were girls with eyes sparkling from the gossip, they were envious and fussing boys. Shinji resentful cursed me under his breath. You can have her, I don't... <laughs> I don't want anything to do with this character. With, with the fake Fujimura. As I watched the upper before me, there stood Miss Fujimura warmly waving at me. Don't make things worse, please. I scrunch my brows and sigh. Looks like these ordinary days have gone through some big changes. Get out let's get out let's go home. Wait, what? How much late? I guessed, not expecting what I saw. This girl struck up a sudden conversation. Without batting an eye, she started going on about me with a jarring way of speaking. Put it simply, she was an exotic girl. Her skin was brown and her white coat had a sense of cleanliness to it. Her, her slender straight silhouette felt androgynous. Still, Tsukumi Hara may be lax with this dress code, but does her outfit even pass the uniform? Like, did she forget to equip a few things? <laughs> あの、今回ばかりは制限超えです。what did I do? Alright, to put it plainly, you're very angry. But this is pretty unusual. As far as I know, this girl's never complained so much before. I've known her for a relatively long time, so I know these facts for certain. Her name is Rani the Eighth, invited to Tsukumihara Academy as an authority on electrical engineering. She's one of the very elite. She grew up in a laboratory, so to her, a normal school life, or making friends for that matter, was new to her. I became friends with her when... That's right, when I got injured in the forest, she helped me with her knowledge. Even though Rani has a blunt personality, once one gets to know her, she's a righteous and morally upstanding girl. That said, here's that very same Rani, and she's quite angry with me. Why are you so upset? When I ask that... Anatagotikan 
on time for what? Rani said so quite decisively. I didn't want to say this, but I have to. I tell Rani I don't have a clue why she's angry. Sh shut it? それが最適かつ最善、そして最高の会。Prove シンプルな式にこそ神は宿る。シオ、私も理解しました。As if nothing had happened, Randy's hair waved as she walked past, along the way. Waiting for Godot. I've never heard of it. Just I don't remember. I become dizzy. Maybe it's the setting sun in my eyes. Come to think of it, I feel like I was talking to someone just now. Must be my imagination. Probably just my imagination. As the head starts to clear up, a familiar figure comes into view. Oh, look. Oh, look who it is. Shinji is sarcastic as usual, but this time I notice a sense more sting in his tone. So I start by asking if something was bothering him. Yes, it's bothering him. <laughs> Sounds like he found some trouble with Rin Sosaka. <laughs> Last time he was harshly rejected, yet Shinji stubbornly is trying to bother her again. Last time. Was Shinji the type of person to keep making passes at someone who's rejected him? But I'm sure we've had this conversation before. What are you Shinji disappeared into the classroom. Probably to pick up his bag and go home. I don't have anything to do at school anymore. I'd be fine to leave now. That's how it should have been, but why isn't the sense of an ease going away? Before I go back, I want to visit the garden for a bit. I may be able to consult her. Okay. To the garden. All of a sudden, my feet stopped. It's not like I tripped on anything, or that someone called out and stopped me. I really just stopped, for no reason at all. No. Rather than why I stopped, it's more like I was recalling why I came here.
vein rushes through my left hand. When I held up to see why, right there was... Oh, it's back. It's back. My mind, my mind, my consciousness is coming apart. What is this? I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. There's no headache, there's no pain. In fact, it's more like a peaceful rest. If I fall asleep just like this, how wonderful would it be? But I'm scared. There's no pain, but a fissure runs through me. It's not my disconnected mind, but my beating heart that seems to be calling out this abnormality. Sounds like someone's someone's watching from the outside. The vertigo subsided in about two seconds. As I swing my head, I put my hand to my chest to check my heartbeat. It was beating so intensely. A vague anxiety gouging at my chest so much to the point my heart could stop. You shouldn't be here. That conviction shoots up from my spine to the brain. Normally, slash strangely, the usual me would have sprinted out of the school building by now. But, dear cast, coming for you fast as I can? Right now, that anxiety I felt is more important to me. It's the voice of someone I shouldn't ever forget. I have to remember them. Even if this is a world I shouldn't be in, a hell I should run away from as fast as I can. But before that, it feels like I need to at least recover the name of that voice's owner on my own. Alright, let's go talk to Rin. She started yelling at me before I even opened my mouth. Through the pressure, I took a second glance at her. To put it simply, she was a flashy girl. She had neat black leather boots and clothes that really showed off her body lines. It gave her an overall impression of tightness. Still, Tsukumi Hari may be lax with this dress coat, but does her outfit even pass as a uniform? Program. The girl seems to be on the verge of grabbing me by force. Even though she's feeling so embarrassed that she's about to resort to violence, I don't panic. Because I know her better than that. Her name is Rinto Saka. She's one of the most popular girls in the school and its highest scoring honor student. When she's quiet, she seems like quite the refined lady, but that's ruined by her headstrong and understated personality. Como tossed up in three seconds flat. Coming off as a tomboy when she opens her mouth. No, in my case, should I say it's a blessing? I don't know how many times her activeness and positivity have helped me. Enemies fighting together? Rin used an interesting choice of words. Our test scores aren't comparable, and we don't have any club activities to compete over. So there's nothing to fight about. In her usual manner, Rin's hair swayed as she walked past along the way. Why am I even picking a fight with him? She said as she tilted her head. Where'd she go? I've become dizzy. Maybe it's the setting sun in my eyes. Come to think of it, I feel like I was talking to someone just now. Must be my imagination. Probably just my imagination. I must be really tired is all. My head starts to clear up. I should head for the shoe lockers now. Oh yeah, you can jump in this game. <laughs> That's 
so goofy. It's the end of the day. The school building has died in the colors of the sunset. There are students at the entrance heading home. Laughter and chit chat fill the air. The usual scene, the usual life. I'm also just about to visit my shoe locker and leave. In the shadows of this twilight, there's a single girl collapsed on the floor in pain. I wonder, who is that? Her breath is worn and her cheeks are flushed. She's clearly sick. And yet, no one seems to notice. This scene is not normal. I'm starting to doubt my sanity. No, the sanity of the people around me. There's no way every single person could just ignore this. There hasn't been so much as a single person who's even glanced at the girl in the white coat. I should... Oh, we gotta help her out. She's... In any case, I have to do something as soon as possible. I lift up the suffering girl. and up. Well, this is troubling. I know this isn't the time, but I'm getting a little nervous. My sweat adorning her white skin is so captivating that any guy would find them... No, even girls would find themselves unable to look away. It's a little rude, but she kind of reminds me of sugar candy. <laughs> what? <laughs> the girl's body is sweet, soft, and fragile to the touch. She's warm as if she's a real living being. <sighs> Doesn't look like she's doing well. I'm seeing her and I'm holding her. That's why I'm able to help her up. She may have a terrible fever. It's so bad that she's not really present and can't tell what's going on. That's not something I really have an answer for. I'm not in any committees, so I respond with my name in classroom. With labored breaths, Sakura looks up at me. Poor thing. No one offered any help. That must have hurt physically and emotionally. You're safe now. I lend her my shoulder to match my words. That's all it took for this girl, calling herself Sakura, to stare back at me with eyes wide open. She seems to be having trouble breathing. It's like the blankness in the instant you catch a m watch a miracle unfold. Answering her with a nod, I pick up the freshman girl. Sakura. Luckily, the infirmary is right around the corner. I should get her to a bed first. Oh, that does not look normal. That does not look normal. I think we might have just done something bad. Or at least something that's going to have consequences down the line. Suddenly I wake up. It seems I dozed off while watching her. The infirmary seems to have that effect on people. An air of serenity fills the infirmary. The bustle of the school is far off from here. Sakura is sleeping in bed. The nurse in charge is out, so I looked after her, despite my lack of experience in caring after people. To be honest, all I could really do is put her to bed and wipe the sweat off her forehead. Long breaths exhale from between Sakura's lips. It would appear that she just woke up. Thank goodness. It's been long enough since then. Her fever seems to be going down too, so I don't have to worry.
As I was looking over the bed in relief, there recently awoken Sakura opened her eyes. When I greeted her, she gave me a soft but happy looking smile in return. Sakura lets out a sigh of relief and looks over to me with a dazzling face. She's filled with such heartfelt gratitude, all I did was look after her. So honestly, I'm a little embarrassed. I set aside those feelings of mine and spoke. Might as well, well, she seems to be getting better, so let's ask. I don't think her fever's gone just yet. I put my hand on Sakura's forehead to check her temperature. At Sakura's insistence, I moved my hand away. She's right, I realized. Checking someone's temperature by touching their forehead is something an elementary schooler would do. It's pretty childish, so it's no wonder she wouldn't like it. Really? I thought if you didn't have a thermometer on hand, doing that was the way to go. I mean, a thermometer is the best way, of course, but I feel like... Ah, uh, whatever. Sakura smiles gently, giving me a slight bow. What's this feeling? Receiving a smile is a common everyday thing, but I feel kind of uncomfortable or embarrassed. Pure and honest gratitude seems to really warm one's heart. I set aside how moved I am and speak to Sakura. Looks, even, looks like even she doesn't know why. めまいを覚えてしまって。あとは先輩の知っている通りです。生徒の皆さんに声をかけても気づいてもらえなくて。ああ、私はここで忘れ去られるんだなんて本気で思っちゃうくらい心細かった。そんな時です。先輩が声を
or not, the conversation in the infirmary kept on going. It wasn't long before the last bell to leave school rang. Sakura then showed me out of the infirmary. As I was leaving, when I turned to look at Sakura one more time, she saw me out of the room, looking on as oh, the verge of tears, as if not wanting us to part ways. Uh oh. Let's go home. Yet again, I feel pain rushing through my left hand. There's a strange bruise on the back of it. Am I worried about the bruise because of my headache, or do I have a headache because of this bruise? I have no idea. Yeah, before I go home, before the morning comes, I should have someone take a look at this. Leo would be fine, Rinto Saku or Rani would be fine. I wouldn't even mind Shinji. Anyways, if I show this command seal... Oh, to someone I know, I'm sure that... Uh-oh. How in the world do you sell off a Holy Grail War? No value. What was with that announcement just now? No, more importantly, what's with this bizarre transformation? Wait, what? Oh, no, that's... Processed. Wait, what? Oh, no. But what on the hell is happening? Feeling the danger, I looked outside. It was dark as if I was staring into a hole. Forget the entrance, window after window has been covered by that black noise. We're getting out of here. We're gonna have to run for it. It would be good to get touched by that black noise. If it's engulfed the entrance in the windows, the only way left is up. Oh wow, it really is following. Oh no, oh, I don't want to touch that. Oh no. That was Shinji's voice. Oh, he's dead. Shinji reaches his hand out to me. He's begging for help with eyes strained in fear. But whether it's the quivering of his mouth or his pride, the words help me won't come out. There's no saving him anymore. There's no point in rushing over to him now. On top of that, if I got too close, then the noise would overwrite me too. All I can do now is ignore Shinji and keep on climbing upwards. And yet... My hands and feet move before I can think, and I reach over to take Shinji's hands. Shut up and let me help. Ugh, Shinji's body is heavy. No, it's that he's been rooted. The lower half of his body is already fused with the hallway. Never mind. Well, well, that's bad. Shinji lets go of my hand. Stifling his fears, his crying eyes tell me. Do not come over here. Dang it. Couldn't save him. He's keeping his hand from reaching out to help by his own will. So <laughs> 
もんだよ友達なんていいからさっさと逃げてろよくそっくそっくそせっかくせっかく僕も思い出したのに礼拝戦争に戻れると思ったのにこんなの全然死なれよな違う And he's dead. Dang it. Master's hand was empty, powerless to save anything. The man who called his friend cruelly vanished before his very eyes. We have to keep living for them. The thump of a remarkably loud heartbeat echoes in my ears. I wonder, what's this feeling in my chest? It's not that I'm afraid of the abnormalities before me. I feel nauseous, but I don't know what it is. I'm suffocating, but I don't know why. But I can't just stop right here. Right now, I have to get away from that noise. I have to live through. Jeez, the liquid is coming up more and more. Rooftop's the only place left. Oh, thank goodness, it's not up here. What the heck has happened? The moment I reached the rooftop, I couldn't believe my eyes. The sky is black. The city is black. Even the ground I'm looking at has been dyed black. It's like an ocean of night. In an instant, the surface of the world was coated in darkness. The single saving grace is that it's still abided by the concept of height. That black ocean stretches from land to horizon, but the water level hasn't reached us here. The rooftop is still high enough to be safe. Maybe not. I hear a scream from the third floor of the school building. I looked back to go help them, but the third floor was already completely eroded by the noise. There already. Yeah, I can hear the deaths. That noise is data. My confused mind calls up incoherent memories. No, it's because I'm so confused that I can remember things I've forgotten. That black noise melts together with the data of whatever it touches, systematically overwriting it with its data. Rather than a bandage covering a wound, it's more like bacteria ingrating, integrating itself with the wound. I guess we're not safe. Their voices completely disappeared. The data was overwhelmed and assimilated their body. Their mind, represented by wedge shapes, was saturated by the data and absorbed. Uh oh. Again, the sense of nausea. My fingertips are shaking from this bizarre situation before me. I want to scream, someone help me, and my throat is dry. But it's not dry from the terror. As if this shaking was from the fear, then why? Why does my body feel this hot? Right now my heart beats strongly with a force the direct opposite of fear. <laughs> a voice from the sky. No, it's echoing from the heavens. A sweet and seductive tone. A scolding, flirting, innocent yet wicked voice of a girl. Uh oh. Back to a corner. Oh. 
らめるの諦めて諦めちゃえ諦めろ諦めれば諦めたら No I don't know what she means Just that the world is ending When I run out of footholds I'll be swallowed up just like the other students The only thing I can do is tremble So So that's the only thing I can do is tremble that's it. The darkness keeps telling me to give up, but I can't do that. I finally will understand what that strong heartbeat, that sense of nausea is. This is anger. I'm gonna fight back and fight like hell. Right now, I'm gonna fight this voice. Whoever this cow this Kelsey deciding that all the students are worthless. Yeah, let's keep going higher. <laughs> I mustn't look away. I mustn't give up. No, I can't give up. Even if this resistance ends up futile. Even if I know I can't run from this world, as long as there's blood in my body, I'll never... N Don't mind me, I'm just gonna go escape now. Geronimo! It wasn't something as grand as being prepared to die. With just not wanting to give up, I jumped off the rooftop. Bye! Falling, falling, falling. Piercing through the ground that turned into an ocean of night. My body fell into a bottomless darkness. There's no end to this falling. Everything but my sense of direction has drifted away. Everything but my sense of self is being torn apart. Not only is my vision peeling off in globs, but so are my possessions and memories. Soon, not even my bones will remain. It looks as if there's nothing more I can do. In other words, it's game over. I cried out, what the hell, as I screamed insults at myself, that I was too rash, that I made a mistake. That I was wrong, in my tremendous regret, my face was filled with tears. That too was futile because there's no one who can save me anymore. Yet there's still hope. Has a moment passed, or an eternity? There's nothing compared to falling through this space. It's like I'm weightless. I can no longer remember the light of day. The land I once stood on is now some hundred million light years away. My limbs have been suspended for so long that they no longer move as I want them to. Could be paralysis, or maybe atrophy. My eyes have forgotten light and have since lost their function. Same with my mind. It grew tired of this unchanging world and is gradually closing itself off. My body is like mud, my heart is like lead. I want to lay my mind to rest already. I want to forget myself already. Worrying that I may be here forever, I want to avert my eyes and break already. But... There's still something bothering me at the edge of my consciousness. It may be my imagination, it may be my mind. Clinging to a shred of hope. Hallucinating, but there's a voice that I just can't let go unheard. That voice is coming from far, far away. Leaving a trail of light in its wake, the voice is completely burning up, yet it accelerates faster. Look to the sky. Reach out your hand. Just say the word. Call out for... Who? Call out for who? My throat and lungs burn from thousands of years of disuse. My voice still won't come out. Even if I try to reach out, my fingers won't move. 
My mind accepts that it's just a hallucination and once again closes the lid on itself. Ah, uh, and yet... I hear a voice say, don't give up. Numerous lights pass through the darkness. Even as it's breaking apart, I can see a meteor cutting through the darkness. Wait, that voice. I know that radiance. I know that voice. My lost throat, my weakened arm fills with strength. That's right, her name is... Come to me, Caster. Let's do this. My hand touches out in its stretched arm. It feels real. The sensation of endlessly falling is gone. All that remains in front of me is my dear old... I let out a grumble about how I always have to do yep. Yep. I do know that, that she's taking this seriously. That said, no one is better at ruining the moment than this servant here. Oof. Well, I do have some comments I'd like to make, I'll let it slide this time. Their pink hair, fox ears, and fox tail, this is the servant of the Magus Caster. The person I had forgotten up until now, who I couldn't completely forget even in this Garden of Oblivion, who swore to fight alongside me, my servant. This servant might not be able to read the room, but she came to this eternally extending darkness to save me despite it burning her to do so. No one believes in me more than her, my irreplaceable friend. <laughs> Did she have different ideas? She had different ideas. Nah, -uh. I may not know where I am right now or what, and I don't know the extent of what I forgot, but my soul is crying out I did no such thing. It's not cast if she's not fl constantly flirting with Fergoshishin-sama. <laughs> I'm afraid your claim bears no truth. <laughs> Come on, you can't fake the real thing. Don't try to. Caster grips my hand tightly. A single flush of warm blood rekindles my frozen body. My slumbering mind is now fully awakened. はい。ゲドクは滞りなく済んだようです。今度こそ安心してお目覚めください。ご主人様の体を貸していた呪いはこの私と3年上を返いたしました。でも無事で本当に良かった。上に戻ったらまた元気な顔を見せてくださいね。
In the end, the only thing I was sure of was the sensation of those fingers I touched. Even if everything else faded away, that feeling would remain. Whew. I think we're in for quite an experience. After all, they never translated this game out. This game was never released outside of Japan. So I guess I've got something rather major inbound. The question here is why it was never released. We might figure out the reason for that as we play along. Still. Welcome back, Caster. Now then. This has been Acquisition, and I'm signing off. See you next time.